اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویورز امنگ آل دا تھنگ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دا میسنجر آف اللہ ہیڈ وانڈ ہی صحابیز اور کمپینینز اباؤٹ دا کمنگ آف دا دجال از دا موسٹ سگنیفکنٹ آف آل ہی ہیز اسرٹڈ دا دجال ٹو بی دا سنگل گریویسٹ ایونٹ ان دا انٹائر ہسٹری آف مین کائنڈ اینڈ ہم سیلف ہیز ساٹ ریفیوج ود اللہ فرام اٹس فتنا اٹس ملائز Because of its influence, the entire mankind is to be led astray while rejecting the Almighty's directives, His sovereignty. Therefore, there is no scope to take the matter of the Dajjal lightly. The Messenger of Allah has described the Dajjal in allegorical terms as a great one-eyed giant. And we have taken the references so literally that we all await a giant of such huge proportions. Moreover, we fail to realize that it has come into being 473 years back and has passed its childhood, youth and is now in the stage of a mature adult. But due to our narrow vision, we are yet to recognize it. Today, the whole world along with the huge population of so-called Muslims have accepted the Dajjal as their Rabb, meaning sustainer, and are busy prostrating themselves before its superior power. The truth is, The Judeo-Christian materialistic civilization is in fact the one-eyed giant which this documentary will prove, inshallah. There are some basic concepts we need to be clear about. So let us start with the creation of man. Allah wished to create a being endowed with all his attributes, his sifats, along with his free will. free will power from him therefore this creature would have the power to choose whether to obey him or make up ways of life rules regulations themselves when he revealed of his intention to create man to the malaikas the angels they replied will thou place therein one who will do harm and shed blood allah disregarded their opinion and went on to create Adam. However, this being was not created with the command of Be, but with his own hands, and then was breathed into from his soul. As a result, this new creature, Adam, rose to the highest position among all creation, bearer of all attributes and sifats of Allah himself. When Allah commanded his malaikas to such the prostrate themselves before Adam they all obeyed except Iblis whose pride refrained him from doing so For this act of disobedience Allah cursed him now and forever to be known as the Arajim Iblis on the other hand challenged Allah saying Now, because thou hast sent me astray, verily I shall lurk in ambush on the right path. Then I shall come upon them from before them, from behind them, and from their right hands, and from their left hands. And you will not find most of them beholden unto thee. To this Allah declared, Go down, all of you from here. But surely there come to you from me a guidance. Whoso follows my guidance, there shall no fear come upon them, neither shall they grieve. Allah accepted Iblis' challenge for the purpose of his creation of man was to put him to test. Thus began the journey of man, forever in trial to see what he followed, if he gave in to Iblis' whisperings or remained steadfast on the directives of Allah. However, Adam gave in to the lure of Iblis and disobeyed Allah. As a punishment for this, both Iblis and Adam were sent to this world and made enemies to each other. Dear audience, the conversation between Allah and His Malaikas give rise to some important questions, such as, Allah declared He created Adam. as his representative or vice-gerent. What does that stand for? How did the Malaikas know in advance that they would create 
anarchy and shed blood on earth. What steps did Allah take to prevent this anarchy and bloodshed? What does Siratul Mustaqim or straight simple path stand for? And lastly, what is the meaning of Allah? It is quite impossible to understand the concept of the Dajjal if the answers to these questions are not known. So let us try to clear the meaning of these questions first. This entire universe is governed by Allah Himself in accordance to His will and rules. But in the case of man, He did not directly retain the reins of governance. Instead, He entrusted mankind to govern themselves in keeping with the ordinances sent by Him. When man leads his collective social life, his personal and political lives, in short, his entire life as ordered by the Almighty, it is then that man carries out his responsibility of being Allah's representative. That is his main primary duty for which he was created. To work as Allah's representative, surely man needed to be empowered accordingly. This Allah accomplished by breathing from his soul into Adam. Example, mankind. With Allah's soul came all his attributes and qualities, including his free will power. The Malaites were able to tell that with this free will power, man would be in a position to reject Allah's orders and create Fasad and Safakuddima, which means anarchy, disorder, and bloodshed on earth. It is clear from Iblis's challenge that his main objective is to influence man, denounce Allah's order, and thus stray from the Siratul Mustaqim. The natural consequence of which would be turmoil, wars, and the shedding of blood. To prevent this, the Almighty revealed a complete code of life, which he named Dinul Islam, or the way of life of peace. The foundation of this system lay in Tawhid, La ilaha illallah, meaning there is none to be obeyed other than Allah, one who has the final authority or the last say in any matter, whether personal, social or matters of the state, is said to be the sovereign, the ilah. The role of the sovereign is highly important because no decision can be reached in any aspect of life, be it personal, social or national issue, without any one authority having the final say. So, the role of the sovereign is present in all constitutions, such as, in the case of monarchy, the sovereign is king or emperor. For democracy, it is the majority population. For socialism and communism, the sovereign is the elite ruling class. For fascism, it's the dictators. And finally for Islam, the sovereign is the almighty Allah. This proves that whichever system of life you may accept, you definitely have to adhere to a particular form of sovereignty. Meaning, there is no compromise regarding this issue. Similarly, since the sovereign of two systems are not the same, it is not possible to accept two ways of life at one time. Therefore, democracy and socialism can't be accepted at a time. Just as Islam and monarchy or democracy can't be accepted at a parallel. For this Allah has most assuredly declared in il hukmu illa lillah meaning the decision rests with Allah only. Therefore, to accept Allah's sovereignty is to reject the word of any other in any aspect of life, where the word of Allah already exists. This is Siratul Mustaqim, the straight and simple path. Now let us see how Iblis influenced mankind to deviate from this Siratul Mustaqim and slither into the pitfalls of turmoil, unrest, injustice and bloodshed. The first victory of Iblis came when he successfully influenced the son of Adam and Hawa, Kabil, to murder his brother Habil. 
The forewarning of the Malayas had come true. That was the beginning of fasad and safakuddhimma, injustice, unrest and violence. The children of Adam and Hawa gradually spread all over the world. And in keeping with his word, Allah sent a long series of messengers to bring mankind to the guidance. Iblis has not been sitting idle either. He kept up his relentless pursuit of straying mankind from Hedaya and throwing them into unrest, turmoil and bloodshed. In this long sequence of messengers, Allah sent his distinguished messenger, Nu, to bring mankind back to the folds of Hedaya. He preached among his people for over 900 years but without any success. Iblis had blinded them to such an extent that they failed to respond to Nu's call. In the end, Allah decided to punish them for this act of denial and ordered Nu to build a ship which would carry his companions and a pair each of all the animals of the world. When all of Nu's companions and animals were on board, Allah caused rains and floods of such proportions that they wiped off the existence of everything else. Only Nu and his companions survived. When the rains and floods had ceased, Nu and his companions descended at a mount named Judy. The children of Adam again started to spread all over the world. They implemented the sovereignty of Allah in all aspects of their lives and lived in peace and tranquility.